humanize. Every time I think, eh, something sounds a little bit human, a little odd, I look up and I see that the humanize is cranked up a bit. Hi, I'm Dumbo Dan from SampleLibraryReview.com. And today we're going to be checking out the new Hyperion Strings Elements by Sound Iron. Sound Iron continues to evolve their Hyperion Strings line, this time going from the micro version to a still ridiculously affordable Elements version. So for Hyperion Strings, we recorded a chamber sized group of eight violins, six violas, five cellos, and four basses, all recorded at Studio A and Fantasy Studios in Berkeley, California. Library downloads is 10.42 gigabytes. It's a string ensemble library with presets for full ensembles, as well as master and true legatos for each section, including violins, violas, cellos, and double basses. Articulations range from sustains, vibrato, non-vibrato, with glists and true legatos, shorts, ranging from staccato, pizzicato, bartok pits, and conlingo, as well as tempo-synced expression performances with crescendos, decrescendos, sforzanzos, all delivered in a wide range of dynamic specifics. With the engine, Sound Iron has included an adaptive play assist and an arpeggio system. The library is a contact player instrument, meaning it's compatible with the full or free version of Native Instruments Contact 6.0.1 or higher. Loads right in your libraries tab and of course is built to NKS standards. Hyperion Strings Elements normally sells for $99 US dollars. At the time of putting this together, it was available for an intro price of $70. There is an upgrade path all along the Hyperion Strings libraries. For those of you who bought the micro version, you'll get full credit toward Hyperion Strings Elements. Head over to Sound Iron for more details. All right, I've got Hyperion Strings Elements right here. You can see it's contact player instrument roads right into your libraries tab in contact six or higher free version of a contact six is working here. We've got uh, several NKIs, one for uh, master, which allows us to play the ensemble across the keyboard. And then we've got a uh, violin master, true legato, viol viola master, true legato, celli, Master True Legato, and Basses Master True Legato. So let's just start out with the Ensemble Master here. It's got um, key switches. Colorful key switches down here. Let us change through our articulation settings. We've got a Legato on-off button. And that's the uh, legato with, let's see what kind of space we've got baked in here. Uh, all positioned right up the center in a cathedral. And then we've got a num number of space presets. Concert seating. Then I'll put those guys in their proper position. Um, it's also important to note this is a studio recording, so if you want to get that super lush verb, you're going to use one of their IRs. They've got some really nice ones, uh, at least from my exploring the micro version of this. I believe these are the same ones. They may have tweaked or added, but let's find out. That cathedral is pretty nice. Let's check out a uh, chamber. Now I got the swell that's tied to the mod wheel. That's where we're going to get our expression. It's got some great 
Pianissimo samples. Now I'm hearing some jumping around there, and if you might have noticed when I hit the ensemble, it looks like the way they built this is they've divided it up across the sections with hard divides, and that's why I'm hearing my uh, violas switch suddenly. Timbre and position when I'm playing between those two right there. What uh, I'm wondering what I might do is just uh, fan them out a little bit so it's not so drastic. Uh, yeah, don't link, link the divider point, I guess. This might give us a little smoother playthrough. I don't know how high these go up to, but let's see. Yeah, something like that. Let's see how that sounds now. Now I'm still hearing a big a change in my positioning, but that's something that's kind of cool because the way they built this, you could actually just click and drag. So I've got my celli right here. Pretty alternative kind of sound there with the additional uh, presets here for our spaces. Uh, let's go back to something a little more natural because I did not preview all of the articulations here. And that's one of the things I like to do first. Pretty nice detail in that. And some staccatos built for eighth notes. Probably get a little better feel of how these staccatos might work when we turn our arpeggiator on. some humanization. Let's get 
back to our different uh, articulations. Now here's our real meaty spiccatos. Let's check that out. It's funny how much you hear that humanization. It sounds like I'm just not quite in time there. Yeah, pretty cool sound with us spiccato there. Then uh, we've got some pizzicato. Ah, I got the arpeggiator on. That's why it's making some strangeness. Nice and warm. And then that the, uh, was the Bartok pits. Now let's check out that Conlingo. Then we've got these specialty um, expressive, and this is kind of cool because they've got some different modes here. We'll just check it out like with some chords. So that's a normal playback. Then we've got a synced playback. I'm going to turn my click on, just play along here so you can hear it. Getting a little weirdness there. 
sounds like we got an extra, uh, extra sample playing. Hmm. But then when I play, that's just that, uh, that's just the C2 there. And these all have dynamic uh, range. And then there's a decrescendo as well, it looks like, right here. And that too has some dynamic layers. And it has the ability to sync. You can change your speed with this. And then some nice sforzandos. Yeah, and then swell, so. It sounds like some of those up here are holding a little longer. It should just be the nature of the be the nature of the way I've got the ensembles laid out here. I wonder if there's a be kind of nice if there's a quick way to re, reset it. I guess you can just hit links like this. And let's see, it was something something like this. Yeah, I'm probably messing it up. So Pretty nice sound through that. So that's our uh, the way that the articulations are set up with key switching. Those are the ones that load up. And then here is all of the articulations so we could pull them out individually. So if you just wanted your, let's see, we've got pizzicato just as forte or as piano. We got dynamic versions. We got spiccato, just as forte. And it looks like we've got the sustains as with vibrato across those dynamics as well, piano. And with the mezzo forte. And with just forte. And I was showing the vibrato, wasn't I? Here we go. So this is just the master patch where we've got the ensemble broken across. 
I have a feeling that when you start to use this as the sections, when you start to load up these sections individually and play them, you're going to have some bit more expressive opportunity. Real nice bits of color up in the high register there. And this is just the master true legato. As you can see, they've broken it out into um, the legato with all your dynamics for each of these. And then you've got your legato piano. That's a piano. That's a forte and forte. So if you really want to get some in there and get some control over those for the master instruments in the sections, I'm pretty sure this is going to be all of our other articulations. With the ability to turn on a legato here, with our dynamic sustain. And then we've got our tremolos, spiccatos, yeah, it's such a dry sound, it's just something I'm not um, used to, but I think that's what they made it. They made it so you got control to get in there and kind of play with. So with any instrument, uh, any section, string section, I should say, the ones that are always going to be heavy in my mind are going to be the violin legatos and then my cello, both my true legato, legato instruments, as well as my spiccato. So it's just the most common for most of the stuff I do.
I think this is going to be key, is programming something like this, where you've got your legato. And then you switch over to your dynamics. these bot Bartek pits sound pretty good. sound to it. There's a whole other set of effects, which I I'll just play a couple of them on here. And they're mostly going to take this way out. So it's no longer string library per se. It's a very affected. So that might be something you'd want to do. Uh, I didn't show any of the play assist here. This actually is a way to go ahead and uh, pre-assign, it looks like, your key. So I can never play the wrong key if I'm going to play C major. All my black keys got turned off. And now... All my white keys are now in D. And we got... Whole tone. Minor scales. So it's just basically forcing your white keys to only let you play within the scale. It's called play assist. And then we've got the uh, Arpeggiator, which I think I'm going to play around a little bit with here. Pegging out. Is it because I got this guy too close? This humanized really does. I, every time I think, eh, something sounds a little bit human, a little odd, I look up and I see that the humanize is cranked up a bit. Um,
The other thing I like about the arpeggio is uh, the way they've set it up. Is you can actually save and uh, reload your arpeggios. So you could, for instance, set up all of your instruments to have a, the same arpeggio. So you could just uh, program them across to all play back in a similar way. All right, that's a first look here of Hyperion Strings Elements. With the micro library, it was pretty remarkable just how lightweight and flexible instrument was. And with this next step here with the elements, it seems that they've just taken the same concept and expanded just enough so that we get a little bit more control over our dynamics. And this raw sound continues to stand apart from the competing libraries, in my opinion. So if you're okay working with their space, their position, and their reverb here, I think you're going to have a, a real successful time getting a sound you'll love versus so many other libraries that use the microphone position method. It's really hard to kind of give you my raw first look input from testing this out when I have the Hyperion Strings Micro so fresh in my head from when they had released it. It just really seems like it's more of the good stuff that they started with Micro expanded on. Thanks so much for checking out the video. I'd love to hear your thoughts about the library. Please comment in the description below. Tell me what you think. Of course, like, share, and subscribe. It's always appreciated. And be sure to head over to samplelibraryreview.com for the latest news, reviews, and a weekly deals page. Mm -hmm.